Bloody Love Triangle After 17 years of marriage, a man's newfound attraction to another woman leads to a tumultuous love triangle marked by intense emotions and conflict. Written by Elam Gureshi In the picturesque coastal town of Lahijan, nestled between the lush forests and the Caspian Sea, two souls embarked on a journey that would forever change their lives. Tara and Aria were students at Lahijan University, both passionate about agricultural engineering. Their paths first crossed in the hallowed halls of the university, where they shared a common love for the land and its bountiful treasures. Tara, with her radiant smile and boundless enthusiasm, was drawn to the world of horticulture from a young age. Growing up in a family of farmers, she had always been captivated by the magic of nature and the art of growing plants. Aria, on the other hand, was a more reserved soul, known for his intellect and unwavering determination. His fascination with the mechanics of farming and irrigation systems led him to pursue a degree in agricultural engineering. Their lives converged one sunny afternoon during a class on sustainable farming practices. As Tara's hand shot up to ask a question about crop rotation, Aria was struck by her passion and knowledge. Soon, they found themselves studying together, sharing insights into soil management, pest control, and the latest advancements in agricultural technology. Their connection grew stronger with each passing day, and before they knew it, they were inseparable. Amid the academic challenges and the joys of college life, Tara and Aria fell in love. Their shared dreams of making a difference in the world of agriculture united them in a profound way. They knew that, together, they could create something beautiful and meaningful. Upon graduating from La Hijin University with honors, Tara and Aria decided to take their relationship to the next level. They chose to get married in the very city where their love story had blossomed. In the heart of Lahijan, they exchanged vows in a traditional Persian ceremony, surrounded by family and friends. Their union was a testament to their commitment to each other and their shared vision for the future. A few years after their wedding, they embarked on a new adventure. With their combined knowledge and a deep passion for agriculture, they purchased a piece of land on the outskirts of Lahijan. This land held a garden, a once neglected piece of paradise that they lovingly transformed. The garden became their canvas, and with dedication and hard work, it flourished with rows of orange, tangerine, and lemon trees. Under their loving care, the garden bore the most succulent fruits, each one a testament to the love that Tara and Aria poured into the land. Their days were filled with the soothing rustle of leaves, the sweet fragrance of blossoms, and the warm embrace of the Mediterranean climate. It was a place where they could see their dreams come to life, one season at a time. Tara and Aria had built a life together in their little piece of paradise. Their garden thrived and so did their love. As they tended to their orchard, they shared laughter, dreams, and the simple joys of life. Their beautiful garden in Lahijan became not just a place to cultivate crops, but also a sanctuary for their love, a symbol of their shared journey, and a testimony to the magic that can happen when two hearts beat as one. As the years passed, Tara and Aria's love only grew stronger. Their life in the garden was filled with romantic moments, shared dreams, and the everyday joys of being together. But, as they say, life has its own twists and turns, and even the most enduring love stories face challenges. The economic conditions in Iran took a downturn, and their garden's products no longer sold as well as they once did. The cost of maintaining the garden began to outweigh the income it generated, putting a strain on their once thriving sanctuary. Hara and Aria faced a difficult decision, one that would change the course of their lives. After much contemplation and many sleepless nights, they made the painful choice to sell the garden and start anew. They decided to move to the nearby city of Rasht, where they would purchase an apartment and seek alternative employment opportunities. The decision was a bittersweet one, 
as it meant leaving behind the garden that held their memories, their dreams, and the love that had blossomed between them. Aria left early to Rash to start their new life and find a job for himself in an engineering office. Kara, on the other hand, remained in Lahijan to oversee the sale of the garden and prepare for their move. Aria's days in Rasht were filled with the excitement of a new job and the challenges of adapting to city life. The engineering office was bustling with activity, and he quickly became a valuable member of the team. In the midst of this change, he often found himself reflecting on his life with Tara and the garden in Lahijan. The longing for her and their shared dreams was a constant presence in his heart. It was in this state of mind that he first encountered Beher. She was the vivacious and welcoming secretary at the office, and her friendly demeanor instantly put Aria at ease. Over coffee breaks and casual conversations, they discovered they had much in common. Both enjoyed the city's bustling atmosphere, its cultural events, and the many opportunities it offered. Their conversations began innocently, revolving around shared interests and the excitement of urban life. Bahair was a gifted storyteller and regaled Aria with tales of Rasht's vibrant history and the hidden gems of the city. Over time, their connection deepened, and they spent more time together outside of work, exploring the city's cafes, parks, and cultural venues. As the days turned into weeks, the lines between friendship and something more began to blur. Aria was enchanted by Beher's kindness and charm, and he couldn't help but be drawn to her magnetic personality. Their laughter became a symphony that filled the spaces between their words, and their shared moments were like snapshots in time. Aria was acutely aware of the growing connection between them and the emotional chasm it was creating in his heart. He had never expected to find such a profound bond with someone other than Tara, the love of his life. The guilt that gnawed at his conscience was overwhelming, and he struggled with the complexity of his emotions. Back in Lahijan, Tara was wrapping up the sale of the garden, her mind filled with thoughts of their new life in Rasht. She missed Aria terribly, and their nightly phone conversations provided her with some solace, but she sensed a shift in his voice, a distance she couldn't quite explain. As the days passed, her intuition grew stronger, and she began to suspect that something had changed in Aria's world. Pay attention to a few issues after Tara went to Rasht, right from the beginning. Tara doesn't know anything about Aria and Beher's relationship. Tara comes to Rasht, but Aria secretly continues her relationship with Beher. Tara suspects Aria of her strange behavior and going out at night. In order to find out about Aria's strange behavior, Tara decides to sew a small microphone inside her coat to listen to her talk outside the house. In Rasht, Tara's arrival brought both anticipation and uncertainty to their lives. Tara was blissfully unaware of Aria's secret relationship with Bahair. As far as she knew, her husband had only just recently moved to Rasht, and their marriage was still intact, at least in her eyes. Aria, on the other hand, struggled to balance the love he held for Tara with his growing feelings for Beher. Despite Tara's presence in Rash, he continued to secretly meet Beher in the quiet, moonlit nights. The attraction was undeniable, and his heart was torn between two worlds. Tara began to notice Aria's strange behavior. He would often leave the house late at night, returning with a distant look in his eyes. His actions were veiled in mystery, and it was evident that he was hiding something. Her suspicions grew stronger with each passing day. Desperate to uncover the truth about Aria's behavior, Tara decided to take matters into her own hands. She couldn't bear the uncertainty any longer. She knew that her husband had always been devoted to her, and this new behavior was unlike anything she had seen before. One evening, while Aria was away, Tara carefully sewed a tiny microphone into the inner layer of his coat. It was an act driven by her need to understand the reason behind his strange actions. She grappled with guilt for invading his privacy, but was overwhelmed by a gnawing anxiety 
that something was amiss. As she listened to the conversations recorded by the hidden microphone, her heart raced. The conversations were filled with warmth and affection, leaving Tara in a state of shock. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. The realization that her husband was keeping a secret relationship with another woman shook her to the core. With tears in her eyes and a heavy heart, Tara confronted Aria about what she had discovered. The revelation left her shattered as she demanded an explanation for his strange behavior. Aria, caught off guard, struggled to find the right words, knowing that his actions had put their relationship in jeopardy. As Tara confronted Aria with the recorded conversations, his initial reaction was to deny the truth, hoping to calm Tara down and somehow salvage their marriage. But the undeniable evidence presented by the recorded conversations left no room for denial, and the silence that hung in the air was suffocating. Tara, overwhelmed by the sense of betrayal, yearned for Aria to explain that his relationship with Beher was merely a superficial affair driven by physical desires. She hoped that their love forged over 17 years was strong enough to overcome this tumultuous storm. But as Aria gazed into Tara's eyes, his heart heavy with guilt, he couldn't bear to lie. With a heavy sigh, he confessed to his deep feelings for Beher, breaking Tara's heart in the process. I fell in love with her, he admitted, his voice filled with remorse. I'm sorry, Tara. Tara's world crumbled around her as she heard those painful words. Aria's confession that he couldn't get over Beher and his desire to break up with Tara cut her like a knife. The anger that had been simmering within her suddenly erupted into a tempestuous rage. In a fit of fury, Tara began to break things, her emotions spiraling out of control. The anger and violence that had been bottled up for so long now found an outlet, and the sound of shattering glass and splintering wood echoed through the house. With tears streaming down her face, Tara looked at Aria, her eyes filled with a mixture of disbelief and hurt. Aria, feeling his own anguish, realized that the pain he had caused was too deep to repair. In that tumultuous moment, he knew he had to leave. Aria, with a heavy heart and tears of regret, quietly walked out of the house, leaving Tara alone with the shattered remnants of their once happy life. Their love, once so strong, had been torn asunder by the complex emotions and the choices that had led them to this heart-wrenching moment. The days that followed that fateful day only saw the rift between Aria and Tara widen. The once harmonious household had become a battleground, with anger and resentment replacing the love that had once defined their relationship. As Baher, who had experienced the pain of a previous failed marriage and had chosen to live independently, continued to occupy a significant place in Aria's life, Aria spent most of his time at Baher's house. He was torn between the love he held for Tara and the passionate affection he felt for Baher. Tara, in a desperate attempt to keep Aria from slipping away, repeatedly threatened to create trouble for herself if he continued his relationship with Beher. She aimed to invoke Aria's pity, hoping he would stay by her side. It worked for a short while, and Aria reluctantly returned home. However, it was merely a temporary reprieve. Their respite was short-lived, as the animosity between Aria and Tara erupted once more. Tara's anger intensified daily, pushing her to make more and more demands of Aria. She insisted that he quit his job and look for new employment, convinced that it was the source of his temptation. But the situation grew even more complicated as Beher began pressuring Aria to divorce Tara and commit to a life with her. Beher was adamant in her desire to have Aria all to herself and she believed that he was worth the upheaval it would cause in his life. Aria found himself trapped between two worlds, torn by his love for Tara and his feelings for Beher. He wanted to end things with Tara to be with Beher, but a deep sense of guilt held him back. He felt compassion for Tara, who had been his partner for 17 years, and couldn't bear the thought of causing her pain.
This inner turmoil fueled the ongoing battles between Arya and Tara, causing a seemingly endless cycle of fighting. The relationship had reached a point of no return, and each fight ended with Arya leaving the house to be with Beher, seeking solace in the arms of the woman who had captured his heart. Despite the tears, the threats, and the emotional turmoil, nothing seemed to have the power to mend the shattered love story between Arya, Tara, and Beher. Their lives remained in a state of chaos and uncertainty, with a future that appeared bleak and fraught with pain. In an attempt to improve Tara's fragile mental state and bring some semblance of peace back into their lives, Arya suggested that she consult a psychologist. He hoped that therapy might help Tara come to terms with their complex situation and ideally lead her toward accepting the idea of a separation. Tara, eager to find a solution and mend their relationship, agreed to Arya's suggestion with optimism. The family counselor sessions commenced, and Tara began pouring her heart out to a neutral third party. She shared the pain and turmoil that had consumed her ever since Bahair entered their lives. Arya, holding on to the hope that the psychologist would eventually persuade Tara to let go of their relationship, watched anxiously as each session unfolded. Bahair, on the other hand, was far from pleased with this development. She couldn't help but feel like an outsider in Arya and Tara's relationship, and the idea of therapy leading to a separation was a cause for concern. Arya, trying to balance his feelings for Beher and his compassion for Tara, reassured her that this was a temporary measure. He hoped that with time, Tara would come to accept their situation and allow Beher to be a part of his life without causing more pain and conflict. However, the situation did not improve as quickly as Arya had hoped. Despite her counseling, Tara's emotional turmoil still drove her to extremes. She resorted to stalking Beher on social media, constantly checking her Instagram and Facebook accounts, and even driving by Beher's house to spy on her and Arya. The fights continued, each one escalating further than the last, Tara's obsession with Bahair and her desperation to hold on to Arya had created a toxic and chaotic environment that seemed to have no end in sight. Exhausted from the ongoing turmoil and the endless cycle of fights and jealousy, Arya finally made a difficult decision. He sat Tara down and with a heavy heart declared that he no longer cared what she did. Arya admitted that he wanted a divorce and intended to be with Bahair. To Arya's surprise, Beher's response was calm and measured. She agreed to the divorce with only one request from Arya. Her request was for them to have a final dinner together in Lahijin, the city filled with cherished memories from their past, and bid each other farewell. Arya, relieved by Beher's understanding and the prospect of a peaceful resolution, agreed to her request. The city of Lahijin was a place where they had spent many memorable moments, and it held a special significance in their hearts. The day arrived, and Arya made the journey to the designated restaurant in Lahijin. However, when he arrived, Tara was conspicuously absent. He received a text message from her, explaining that she would be running half an hour late and asking him to wait a little longer. As he sat alone in the restaurant, Arya couldn't help but reflect on the tumultuous journey of their love story. The future remained uncertain, and the path ahead was shrouded in doubt and emotion. The bittersweet reunion in Lahijin would serve as a poignant moment for Arya, a chance to say goodbye to the love that had defined so much of his life. After enduring 45 minutes of anxious waiting in the restaurant, Arya's concern deepened. At last, he received an email from Tara, which included a heartfelt letter accompanied by an attached photograph. Filled with worry and urgency, Arya wasted no time. He promptly reached out to the local authorities, informing them of the situation, and then hastily drove to Beher's residence, his heart racing with apprehension. As Arya reached Beher's house, he was met with a grim scene. The police had cordoned off the area around Beher's residence, and the distressing news had just broken that two lifeless bodies had been found within her home. Beher's lifeless body, 
shot in the head with a hunting rifle, went to the medical examiner along with the body of Tara, who shot herself in the throat with the same gun. The email that prompted Aria to contact the police and make an urgent journey from Lahijan to Rasht read as follows. My dearest Aria, I'm uncertain whether this incident is my responsibility or yours. The psychologist enlightened me about the powerful impact of hormones secreted within our bodies that influence us as human beings. He urged that a cultured individual should learn to govern these influences, either through self-awareness, concentration, knowledge, and yoga, or sometimes through pharmaceutical means. He explained that even emotions like love, anger, jealousy, and a sense of superiority are subject to the chemical sway of our brains and can be managed. The doctor extended an offer of medication to alleviate the sorrow stemming from your betrayal and to help me endure, recover, and rejoin the world. He posited that my future, perhaps in time, might be more beautiful without you than with you. However, I declined the medication to remain devoted to our love. The question of blame eludes me. Is it you embracing the allure of spring's new love, or is it my own emotions? Is it your newfound affection for another, or is it my own feelings of hatred, anger, and the desire for retribution? The doctor advised that we ought to respect ourselves and occasionally release the things we hold dear to continue our journey through life. It's possible that this may yield a brighter future. I believe the doctor's wisdom holds merit, yet I chose not to heed his counsel. Instead, I decided to separate myself from you and withdraw your cherished lady from your life. I leave you to grapple with a heavy conscience and distance from spring. Beher and I will depart, and you will carry the weight of this memory throughout your life. Farewell, my love. The photo enclosed in the email depicted Beher's lifeless body on the floor of her residence in Rasht. The End Elam Gureshi Be sure to like our content and stay tuned by subscribing.